On top of Chapultepec Heights, overlooking Mexico City, stands Chapultepec Castle, the official White House of Mexico and the home of the President. Built, decorated and furnished by Maximilian, the last Emperor of Mexico, and his consort, Charlotte, the castle is filled with treasures of historic value and interest. From the castle balcony, one has a wonderful view of the city and the mountains. Here we see Sleeping Lady, 17,300 feet high, and Smoking Mountain, 17,800 feet high. The latter so-called because of its volcanic origin. Sleeping Lady with its blanket of snow is so-called because from a distance it has the appearance of a woman lying down sleeping. Often there are parades, both interesting and picturesque, impressive to visitors and a source of pride to all Mexicans. The cadets from the military academy, the West Point of Mexico, are the future army officers. The personal guard of the president is the black horse troop. These horses and men are carefully selected and evenly matched, creating a fine appearance. The regular army, well equipped and properly drilled, show a confidence as to their ability and efficiency. The police department is one of the finest in the world. The men are carefully picked and extensively trained, both physically and in duties each must perform. One can see the result of such training and feel the pride these men have in their responsibility. The same condition is true of the fire department. They may not look like firefighters, but don't let their snappy dress uniforms deceive you. Each man is an athlete of the highest type. And with the blowing of the siren, they are on their way with the finest modern equipment to face the hazards of fire and to save human lives and property. On the Plaza de la Constitution is the National Palace, containing the government offices, Senate chamber, and museum. Here hangs the Liberty Bell, first rung by the priest Hidalgo the night of September 16, 1810, calling the people to revolt for independence. It is rung now each anniversary at midnight by the president. The National Museum contains a wonderful collection of panels, the sacrificial stones, and treasures through which the early history of Aztec and Toltec races have been traced. The original Aztec stone calendar weighs over 20 tons, and its carving relates the history of world development during the early period. The government has built and equipped a number of schools throughout the country where young Mexico is taught up-to-date scientific agriculture and farming methods. The Bank of Mexico was founded by the government in 1925 and has done much to stabilize the finance of Mexico. The National Theater was started in 1900 and though not fully completed, has cost 20 million pesos to date. The downtown streets of Mexico City are narrow. Because of this, traffic is very heavy. Yet it is handled in the highest type manner. One seldom hears of a serious accident or death in the street because without question, vehicles and pedestrians obey the police direction. The controlling interest of the national railways is held by the government. However, the actual administration is under private direction. An excellent true service is operated from the Texas border to Mexico City. At least one member of each train crew speaks English and the stranger is made comfortable and welcome. The federal district is patterned after our District of Columbia. Its attractive parks, some of which are equipped with outdoor radios for the entertainment of the people, are places of beauty where all are welcome to relax, rest, and enjoy the pleasures provided by official Mexico. This is the beautiful statue of Guanamo, the last Aztec emperor. His army was defeated by the Spaniards in 1521. Guanamoc was captured and is pictured on these brass plates, tortured to death in an attempt which failed to make him disclose the hiding place of the Aztec treasure. The Victory Monument is located in the heart of Mexico City and is dedicated to Mexican independence. This capital city, because of its elevation and protective mountain range, 
has the finest tropical climate in all Mexico. And with a million population, it is a most modern city, well laid out. From the air, we have a dandy view of the new stadium building of concrete and steel in horseshoe shape. The playground where grown-ups never seem to be too busy to stop and romp with the kiddies. The national recreation field planned by the government is often the scene of public events and fiestas. The bridle path in Chapultepec Park is a popular spot. Here army officers in uniform and citizens in costume mounted on spirited horses may be seen taking their daily exercise. One of the most attractive things about this romantic country is that no matter where the location, even close to cosmopolitan Mexico City, a short auto ride will take you from the new world and present customs into an old world and primitive method. Here, just outside of official Mexico, we see an important activity of the native Indians, wash day, which is every day. The method used is the same as recorded back in biblical days. The results, if compared to that of the automatic washing machine, so common in our home, would amaze the American housewife. Contrary to natural belief, the pounding of the clothes on rocks does not damage them. And when laid out on the ground to be aired and sun-dried, they are as clean and white as driven snow. Water, one of the most important necessities of life, is secured from this picturesque stream, and in earthen jars which are made by the Indians, carried to the home. This seems to be mostly the duty of the lady of the house. Well, it is. These Indians are unusually friendly with a tired and hungry stranger. They will not only share their bed and food, but will give their last bit of food, go hungry themselves, and sleep on the ground so that their guests may rest better. Surely this is a hospitality seldom extended anywhere else in the world. We would like to spend more time with these friendly people, but we must hurry along. The old monastery built in 1606, a restful spot, symbolic of peace and quiet, which we pass on our way to other points beyond the Rio Grande.